Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules 153 here with another episode of Short Circuits. In today's episode, we'll be going over how to make health bars, how to give puppets lives, and also how to make a custom resource bar such as Mana or Fury. You can see down the bottom of the screen that my puppet's health bar is currently full, but when I move close to this health modifier, it starts to decrease, he slowly loses all of the bar, and then when the bar reaches zero, he'll die and respawn. The puppet will only respawn twice because it's got three lives, and we'll also go over how to make a custom mana bar that decreases and refills. So first of all, we're going to want to make our health bar. We'll grab out a microchip, and we'll give this a green skull icon for the health. Now to make a health bar, we need some text boxes. We'll go and grab out a text displayer, and we'll just put in a space bar. Just so that the text box has some text in it and will display, because otherwise if you don't put anything in the text box it won't show it. We'll jump into the border properties and get rid of the border and the shadow. And we'll make this a custom size by turning off the auto fit option down the bottom of the text box properties page. Now we're going to squash this text box down as far as we can so that it's in a bit of a bar shape. On the alignment page we need to make sure that the text box is set to left margin otherwise the text box won't shrink like a health bar would. It would shrink from both sides into the center rather than from the right to the left. So we'll turn our horizontal alignment to the left there and we'll put our health bar up the top left of the screen. We'll make this part the green part of our health bar, so the part that has health. And now we need to make the red part for the part that doesn't have health, so we'll duplicate that. And we'll go back into the text box properties and make this part red. Now we want to make sure the green part is always on top, so we'll go into the settings page of the green part and we'll increase the layers to around 40. So if one text box's sort order is higher than another, it will show in front of that other text box. When we hit play now, you can see that we can only see the green text box, which is exactly what we want. We'll need something to shrink this green text box down. So we'll grab out a keyframe and we'll select that green text box and shrink that as far left as it will go. So that when this keyframe is fully active, we will have no health. So now we need to power this keyframe depending on how much health we have. If we open up the health manager tweak menu here, you can see that we've got 100 health, which is our current health bar just down the bottom here, and this is what we'll be powering our keyframe. Because we want to use the health slider, we'll need to divide our health by 100 because the keyframe will only accept a value of 0 to 1 to its power port. If we divide this value by 100, it'll always keep that value between 0 and 1. So we'll grab out a calculator here and set it to divide. And we're going to divide by 100. So we'll grab our current health, plug that into the calculator. And if we see this value now, you can see the value is 1 because we have 100 health. If we lower our current health, you can see it gets a percentage signal all the way down to zero. Because we've shrunk our text bar with the keyframe, we need it to be off when we have 100% health, and then we want it to slowly turn on. So what we basically need is the opposite of what this calculator is giving us, so we'll grab out a NOT gate, we'll plug that calculator directly into it, and then the NOT gate into the keyframe. So now, while we have 100 health, the health bar is totally green, but as our health decreases, the keyframe slowly turns on and shrinks the health bar. Now if we grab out a health modifier, and we'll jump into the tweak menu and lessen that damage a little bit, that'll do fine, so about 15, and we'll do that continuously in a zone. So when the player is in this zone, they'll be taking damage. Let's move that right on top of him so he's always taking damage. And you can see the health bar is already decreasing. 
Then when it reaches zero, it respawns, and the process starts again. We may also want our character to have lives. For that, we'll need a custom counting system that's not attached to the character. If we attach our counting system to the character, when the character dies, everything will be reset. We'll grab out a variable here, and we'll rename this one to lives. And we'll have a minimum of zero, and a maximum of three. We also want our initial value to be three because we initially want to start with three lives. Now we'll need some way to update this variable when the player dies. We'll grab out a variable modifier and we'll set this to modify the lives variable. And we're going to add negative one lives to the lives variable every time the player dies. There's no subtraction option, so you just have to add a negative number and it does the same thing. We've already got an output on the health modifier for no health, so when the player has no health, we're going to update this variable and deduct a life. When the player is out of lives, we don't want them to spawn anymore, and we want the player to be destroyed. So we'll get the lives variable, and we'll use a calculator to see whether this is zero. So if the lives is equal to zero, so if we have no lives, and we'll activate a destroyer to destroy the puppet. Now if we crank this health modifier a bit, so it's a bit faster, and we jump into test mode, and you can see that he gets destroyed and doesn't come back to life. That's just about all we need for a functioning health and live system. So now I'll take you through how to make a custom resource, so like mana for example. We'll grab out another microchip, and we'll give this one a different icon just so it's nice and easy to see what it is. And we're going to want another variable for this because we're going to need to keep track of another resource, in this case the mana, so we'll call this mana but you can call this whatever you want. We'll want our minimum value to be zero, and we'll want our maximum value to be 100. We'll also want our initial value to be 100 because we want to start with 100 mana. So for this mana setup, I've got a bit of an animation already here, so I'll just drag that onto the chip and I'll activate that when the player presses a button to spend the mana. Now for this power up, we're going to use the square button. So we'll grab out a node and just set that to the controller icon. I'll grab the square button. And we'll also want something to toggle between the attack and not attack states. So we need to plug this node, so when we attack, into the B port. So by default, we won't be spending the resource, but then when we use the attack, we'll be spending the resource on port B. When the player isn't pressing the button anymore, we need a way to stop them attacking again and set the selector back to port A. So when the player is not pressing the square button, we'll grab out a not gate, and we'll plug that directly into port A of the selector. So when they are pressing the square button, it changes to port B, and when they're not, it changes back to port A again. We'll need some variable modifiers to update our mana variable. We'll change these to modify the mana variable and we'll add a negative number again. Negative two. And we'll also want the mana to recharge as well. So we'll need another modifier that adds to this variable and we'll make that a one. So it recharges slower than it gets used. Whenever port B is active, we'll be attacking. So we want to deduct the mana when we're attacking. And then when we're not attacking, we want the mana to recharge again. Just one more thing with the variable modifiers. We'll just change both of these to update continuously 
so it's continuously adding and continuously subtracting from the variable when it's on and off. If we jump into test mode now and possess the character, if we hold down the square button, you can see the mana gets spent all the way when it gets to zero, but the player doesn't stop attacking when it hits zero. To fix that, we'll need one more variable modifier, and we'll put this on the get setting, so we're getting the number of the variable, and we'll use another calculator to check whether the variable is zero. So basically, if we're out of mana. So if we are out of mana, then I want to reset back to port A on the selector to stop attacking and start recharging again. So now if we jump into test mode once more, you can see that when we hold down the button, the mana gets spent, and then it forces us to stop attacking when it hits zero, and then it slowly recharges the mana back up again. I'll just quickly go through and make a mana bar now as well. Now because our mana is a value of somewhere between 0 and 100 again, we can use the same logic that we used over here for the health bar. We'll grab the calculator and the knock gate and we'll duplicate those. Move those text displays out of the way, they are enormous. And we'll use this variable modifier that's already here getting the signal for the mana, and we'll plug that into the port that our health was plugged into. This is basically just replacing the health signal with the mana signal. Now we'll do the same thing again and we'll grab out a keyframe and we're going to shrink that blue all the way down. Like so, and then we'll plug our knock gate into that keyframe again. So now if we jump back into test mode here and possess the character once more, if we hold down square, you can see the mana decreases slowly and then it increases as we stop firing. We don't currently have a user interface for our lives, so we'll go through how to do that now. I'll grab out another text box and we'll use an emoji for this. Turn off the background and the border and the shadow. We'll move this up underneath our other bars. We'll make a couple of copies of these for our three lives. We'll move these ones over a bit. Actually turn the grid on so they're a little bit tidy. So now we've got our three hearts indicating our lives. Now we need to turn these on based on how many lives we have left. We've already got a variable modifier getting our lives on the health chip that we made earlier. So we can grab out a selector and we're going to use a different port on the selector here. We're going to use the active port down the bottom. So if we plug our variable value directly into the active port, this will activate a different port depending on how many lives we have left. You can see at the moment, port D is activated because we have three lives. If we decrease the lives down to two, you can see port C is now active. So because we know that port D will be active when we have three lives, basically the way this works is it goes port zero, one, two, three, 
So just remember there's a port zero. So because port D will be active when we have all of our lives, we'll turn on these three text boxes here. For port D, for port C, we'll turn on just two of them. And for port B, we'll turn on just one. chip pinned to the screen up in the top right there so you can see currently port D is active because we have our three lives then as we lose a life it will deactivate one of those text boxes because you can see port C is now active and then if we lose another life port B will become active and only show one of the hearts this is exactly the setup I used for the health bars and the lives in create clash the only difference here is that the text boxes with the health bars are in the scene rather than stuck to the user interface. There's a button to put the text box in the scene on the settings page in the tweak menu. Anyway guys, that's pretty much our custom health and mana tutorial. We've got a custom resource going, we've got a health bar and some lives, all displaying nicely. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.